Hello, it's Miss Smith and you're back for some more RE. Um, today I thought I'd start our lesson slightly different to normal. Um, I'm going to start with a question. It says, which would you prefer to give up? So, which would you prefer to give up out of crisps or chocolate? Um, okay, the next one. What about this time? This might be getting trickier. Which would you rather give up? Your bike or a car? Now, obviously, I know you're a bit too young to be driving, okay, but also think about how um, when your parents use a car, would you rather give up your bike um, or your parents' car? And then the final one, which would you rather give up? <clears throat> would you rather give up your TV or your Nintendo Switch or what other, whatever gaming console you've got at home? Okay then, so today's learning question is why do Christians give up something for Lent? So you've just had a look at some items that I've asked, would you, which would you rather give up? Um, and that links with our LQ because we're going to look at Christians in particular. Um, just pause me here and have a think of, have you heard of the word Lent before? Do you know what it means and do you know when in the year it happens? Okay then, so today we're going to start off talking about Lent with what do you know about Pancake Day? You might know lots about Pancake Day. I'm sure you've all tried pancakes at one point in your life. Um, or you might not know very much about Pancake Day at all. Um, there is a link here for a video that I would like you to watch. But before you watch it, I would like you to have a go at answering some of these questions by yourself. So um, do you know the name for Pancake Day? The proper name for Pancake Day? Um, why is Pancake Day celebrated and who celebrates it? Um, oh, that was my next question. Who celebrates Pancake Day? What is Ash Wednesday? And then when is Shrove Tuesday this year? So 2021. Pause me here and have a go at answering those questions on your own. OK, then, so you've had a go on your own. And it's OK if you didn't know the answers to some of those questions. You might not have known the answers to any of those questions, and that's fine. What I would like you to do now is we're going to watch this video here, and it is on the document that says RE links, which is on our website. We've been using it quite a bit. And it's this first link here that says Shrove Tuesday. When you click on it, it will open it up to a page that looks like this. And there's a, a video to watch, which is about seven minutes long. Um, it's of a father and a son and they're making some pancakes and they're going to explain to you why um, Pancake Day came about and why it's important to Christians. If you pause me here and watch this video and then press play when you've finished. OK, then, so hopefully you've watched that video now and you should be able to answer a few more of these questions. So the proper name for Pancake Day is Shrove Tuesday. OK, you should know why Pancake Day is celebrated. Christians celebrate Pancake Day. You should know what Ash Wednesday is. Um, the last question says, when is Shrove Tuesday this year? Um, in fact, on my next slide, I've got it on a calendar. So this year, Shrove Tuesday is on the 16th of February, which isn't very far away. Um, the day after Shrove Tuesday is when Lent begins. OK, and that's called Ash Wednesday. And this year it's on the 17th of February, so in a few weeks time. Um, my next question for you, I've also circled on here, Easter Sunday. And this year it is on the 4th of April. I'd just like you to work out for me how many days are between Ash Wednesday until Easter Sunday. So pause me here and count how many days are between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday. OK, so hopefully you managed to count that there are 46 days between now and Easter Sunday. Um, but Christians, um, we're going to actually subtract the Sundays, OK, because that's um, the Christians day of worship. So how many days, not including Sundays, are there until um, from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday? Pause me here whilst you work it out. OK, so hopefully you knew that there were 46 days from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday. I hope you counted how many Sundays there were. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, and then subtracted it rather than counting up all your days again. So 46 subtract six days is 40 days. So this period of 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter Sunday is called Lent. And this is a time that is used by Christians around the world to prepare for Easter. Um, if you'd like to find out some more information about Lent, okay, and what it is that Christians do um, during Lent, there is some more information on this link here. Now, this again was on our RE Links document that's on the website, and we've used this a lot. It's that second link here, and it's just got some more information about Lent, and it looks like this. So it says, what is Lent? Did you know? And what do Christians do during Lent? That's the most important that I would like you to read, please. So what do Christians do during Lent? If you haven't got that link up, you can pause my video here and you should be able to read off your screen the bit that says, what do Christians do during Lent? Pause me whilst you read it and then press play when you're ready to move on. OK, then, so you should have finished reading about Lent by now um, and understand why Christians celebrate it. Going back to my smart, I have our next activity. So here are eight things that Christians may or may not do during Lent. And depending on the Christian, they may choose to do some of it. They may choose to do all of it. It's completely up to that person and how they choose to practice their faith. What I would like you to do, this is also on our website. And it is um, called Lesson, or let's just check what it's called. It's called this one, I've called it Lesson 4. Okay, it's the only sheet that is called Lesson 4. Um, if you have a printer at home, you could cut these out, um, print them off and cut them out. Or again, you could just number them 1 to 8 and use that to help you answer the question. It's completely up to you. With these eight um, statements of the different ways in which Christians celebrate Lent, um, I would like you to have a go at putting them in order of what you think might be the most important practices for Christians down to the least important practices. OK, um, and this is what's important to a Christian, not important to yourself, but what you think would be important to Christians in general. You can choose. You might want to have them in pairs and have the two most important things and maybe the two most least important things. That's poor English. The two <laughs> least important things. Um, or you could just put them in a um, in a row from one to eight, starting from least to most important. It's completely up to you how you choose to organise this. OK, it's whatever you feel would represent your views the clearest. Um, pause me here whilst you organise them and then press play when you're ready to move on to the final part of the lesson. OK, then, so hopefully you've put them in some form of an order. Um, if you have... Um, a glue stick at home you could always stick them on a piece of paper um, and label which end is the most and the least important feel free to send in a picture of your work please to either myself or um, on the otter class email address or to your class teacher just to share with them your learning and to share which um, practices you felt were the most important if you'd like to go that step further and go over and above feel free to write next to your um, answers why you chose to put them there so for example if you chose that christians meet together in groups to study the bible and pray if you chose that as the most important practice during lent maybe right next to it why you, you chose that um practice that's something we'd normally do in class we normally have that conversation but unfortunately we can't at the moment um, once you've done that, as I mentioned before, send a picture to your adult, to your um, teacher, and then I can try and have a look at it. Hopefully we'll be able to choose some nice ones to pop in our RE floor book as well. Just before we finish off the lesson, we always have to go back to our LQ. Our learning question at the beginning of the lesson was, why do Christians give up something for Lent? I would like you to have a go now, please, on a piece of paper or in an exercise book if you have one. And share with me, why do you think Christians give something up for Lent? If you need help with a sentence start, I'm going to give you one now. So, I think that Christians give something up for Lent because. And then you can go on to explain your answer. If you would like to, you could use some stories from the Bible 
and what you know about Jesus and God to help support your answer. OK, um, you may also find, have found some information on the website or any of the videos that we've watched so far this term. Right then, I will speak to you again for our next lesson of RE. Um, and in the meantime, let me know and send me pictures if you happen to make some pancakes. Bye.